nerdrotic.com. Welcome back to Nerdrotic. My name is Gary Beekler and I come to you from nerdrotic.com and once again we need to talk about the Star Trek Discovery Tardigrades lawsuit. Anasab Dean updated his blog today and it blasted out on Twitter. Please go check it out and you know this time I'll put the link in the description and this update is interesting because it's talking about the leaps of logic that CBS is doing within this lawsuit and it's kind of ironic that they own the show that used to be known for logic, but they are definitely not being a logic extremist. Another thing I wanted to hit on, because I was going to make this video anyway, despite the update hitting today, so it's great timing. I was going to ask again, why isn't the access media covering this? Now, of course, I'm going to ask this question knowing the answer, but I still want to put them on blast a little bit because I noticed they do cover plagiarism and trademark cases. I have an example with Netflix that I'll show you later. I also wanted to thank publicly Ricada Law. It's a great channel. He talked about it about a week ago, and I'm going to reference some of what he talked about in context, of course. And just to get to the bottom of, did we get somewhat of a confession from CBS? They had been dragging their feet on the discovery of Discovery. And the discovery was Anas Abdeen would have access or his, him and his legal team would have access to the Steam accounts of the employees who were working for Star Trek at the time. And at the time of my last video, CBS had been dragging their feet. Now to paint the picture here, of course, Tardigrades is a point-and-click adventure created by Anas Abdeen that has a giant blue tardigrade that helps people travel instantly through time and space. There is a blonde gay botanist character that looks a lot like Stamets from Star Trek Discovery. He is in a relationship with a person of color that looks a lot like Dr. Calder. There is also a character that looks a lot like Michael Burnham. And there's also a character that looks a lot like Tilly. Independently, it wouldn't be a big deal, but you group them together with the giant blue tardigrade that travels instantaneously through time and space and the added effect of light blue little flecks that look a lot like the little blue specks that come from the spore drive within the show and you have a lot of coincidences. And CBS knows this and so does Nick Rakeda of Rakeda Law. He talked about it, like I said, about a week ago. Nick goes over the legal document that has CBS acknowledging they will go through with their discovery. Apparently, they had been dragging their feet quite a bit, and apparently, there's a reason for this. But, as Nick explains it, there was a limited time for discovery, and CBS hadn't produced anything. Anas had tried to call them to get them to produce something, and again, they wouldn't answer, which sounds very familiar because they did this prior to the lawsuit as well, and it took a judge to force Discovery to start. So they finally came to the table, and Nick Ricada calls it a lot of poppy cockery. While that's not a legal term, it's one that I can understand. I may have a bigger beard than Nick Ricada, but he definitely has a bigger brain, and he's an actual lawyer. Now, I'm just paraphrasing here for all the legalese and the real explanation. Please go to the video, which will be linked in the description with a timestamp. He goes on to explain that CBS using this as a delay tactic because it seems well to me anyway. I'll say it seems to me that they are caught red handed. Nick explains that within the document that CBS is saying that even though some of their creators might have had access to the tardigrade, that they came up with it independently. They might have seen it, but it was still their idea. And then he notices that CBS says that they had come up with the tardigrade prior to a Nasab Dean but they didn't put it in their original argument. I find that very curious. There is some evidence of this, but it would still favor a NAS. I'm going to reference another YouTuber, Midnight's Edge, who are great. And they had Robert Meyer Burnett on, and he was talking about some of the drama when Fuller left and Kurtzman came in and that Fuller had the tardigrade as like an anthropomorphic character, kind of like Chewbacca. It actually had a name, a frame, but it was Kurtzman's team who came in and turned it into the big giant blue tardigrade that travels instantaneously through time and space. And this is where I come up with my theory. Fuller had left. He had come up with this character. 
that looked nothing like the character that turned up in their show. The new team at Star Trek was under the gun. They didn't have a lot of time to produce their show, so they had to rush and maybe somebody accessed their Steam account and possibly saw the giant blue tardigrade created by a Nasab Dean and ripped it off. In my opinion, that is a plausible story. I will link that video with the timestamp about that. Now, none of that is fact. That is just Robert Meyer Burnett talking about what he has heard from his sources. So we got to file this under rumor. And now let's get to Anas's blog post. Protectable. Let me mention some facts. Now, please bear with me as what you are about to read is not going to sound logical at all, except to CBS's lawyers, Wook Wang and Jonathan Zavin. One, first, they argued they did nothing wrong and that my complaint, the lawsuit, is frivolous, which the court later ruled in my favor for this part. Two, then they partially admitted access and copying, but they copied the de minimis, the allowable amount, and scenes afar, common scenes in a specific genre or theme. A gunfight is a common thing in a Western. A giant blue tardigrade traveling instantaneously through time and space is not, in my opinion. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Then they argued, and I can't believe I'm saying this, that what they copied has no similarities. And finally, they are now saying that they did not copy because we came with our ideas independently. Well, of course they're going to say this. They are lawyers, they are CBS, but the court of public opinion, well, me and Q here will sit in judgment and we deem CBS guilty. Now, I'm not a law expert, and neither am I, but Nick Krakata is, or anything, but I think even a five-year-old can come up with a better and more logical argument than Wooks. I had to make sure with both my lawyers, Alan Chan and John Johnson, that I do understand these arguments clearly as they make no sense to me. These arguments are from their actual filed dismissal letters to the court. All they did so far are desperate trials to mislead the court with irrelevant cases while contradicting themselves to a pathetic point. Why would they need to use all the varied and different arguments if they are innocent? That is a very good question. Based on Wook's arguments, my elements are not protectable. So the same goes with theirs. None of their material is protectable. Scenes afar. None of their Star Trek material is protectable. Did you hear that? Star Trek continues. This means from their argument that anyone can create a work with the same bridge crew and the spore drive and the giant tardigrade navigator. Does that mean the Orville had protection from the beginning and is not treated as a parody? Because honestly, the Orville did not even get close to any of those specific elements from Star Trek as Star Trek Discovery did with my Tardigrades game. Very good point. Sometimes I feel puzzled how Wook's arguments go past CBS's law department unless their intention is to damage the IP of the Star Trek franchise to win their battle with me. So far, this is what seems to be going on. And I have to agree with them because Star Trek Discovery has done more damage to the Star Trek IP than anybody could have possibly imagined. Again, I'm going to show you this picture of all the similarities right there with Stamets and all the little blue specks and the giant blue tardigrade. Just look at this. Yes, a five-year-old can figure this out. This should be reported on. Why is nobody talking about it? I know the answer to this question. The access media lives in fear of CBS. Well, I don't, and I will update you as much as possible. Now, really quick, I want to show you an example of just a trademark dispute with Netflix over Bandersnatch that is being reported on quite a bit, like here, and here, and here, and oh, look at the Google search. But if you Google search Tardigrades lawsuit, you're going to get our videos and a Metro article from damn near a year ago. Now, this was brought up to me while I was covering Star Trek Discovery Season 1, and it's been brought up by other YouTubers. To their credit, thank you very much. And I think there needs to be more of us talking about this to hold CBS's feet to the fire. And there's really no excuse for the access media not to be reporting on this. My little channel gets hundreds of thousands of views on this. I've got three videos that have hit 100,000 views on this subject alone. And I'm sure there's a little website out there that can use 100,000 clicks for your advertisers and you would look like less of a shill and help build some integrity by protecting independent creators from the 
these giant corporations. Now, this is going to be a huge uphill battle for Anas Abdeen. Why? Because the copyright laws clearly favor the major corporations. How do I know this? Well, I'm just guessing and having somewhat of a knowledge of how the world works, Politicians need to get elected. It costs money. They get donations from the entertainment companies. They get favorable treatment, possibly. They get laws written to their favor, possibly in exchange, possibly in my opinion, for some financial donations to get reelected. They're all in each other's pockets, literally playing pocket pool with each other, in my opinion. And the access media is on the knob of CBS All Access and Disney. And CBS doesn't have to worry about a damn thing because they know nobody is going to report on this, in my opinion, one more time. But hey, they're bringing skirts back to Star Trek so everything's okay. Thankfully, some of us are willing to still talk about this and we will continue to do that. And the next time there's an update, I will let you know. And as every day goes by, the access media looks like just what they are, a bunch of shills. Please like, share, and subscribe this one. I would really appreciate it. Get the word out there as much as you can. Hashtag justice for Anas. Everybody have a great day and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe.